Power Toys is a set of utilities and apps that help you enhance the functionality of Windows and maximize your productivity. These tools provide a range of features, shortcuts, enhancements, and various ways to make you more efficient when using Windows. It also has some features that you might have seen in other operating systems, but can be enabled in Windows too, thanks to Power Toys. If you haven't heard of Power Toys, or it's been a while since you've looked at all the features, sit back as we go through every utility in the Power Toys suite, and by the end of this video, you'll be a pro, or at least you'll look like one using these tools. So once installed, you'll have a little icon in your system tray where you can launch individual applications, toggle features on and off, or see all the settings for applications. We'll start with Always on top. This allows you to pin Windows on top of all of your other windows. This is helpful for those times when you want a window to always hover above the rest of the windows, regardless of which window is in focus. To activate this, you just press the Windows key plus Control plus T. This will play a sound and show a border around the window that will always be on top. Now, if you try to drag a window on top of this window, it will remain on top. You can adjust the color mode for the border and choose any color you like or just stick with your theme's default. You can also choose the thickness of the border and choose whether or not you want to round the corners. Finally, you can also choose to enable or disable the sound when activating. You can also choose to exclude apps from pinning on the top by entering the process name here. After adding in here, the process will ignore the shortcut to activate always on top. Awake is a quick way to keep your computer awake without having to adjust any of the power and sleep settings. This is helpful when running demos, conferences, or any other task where you want to be sure that your device doesn't go to sleep or turn off its screen. In the settings for this utility, you can choose to keep using the selected power plan, which means it won't affect the power settings at all. If you change it to keep away indefinitely, your computer will stay awake until you explicitly put the machine to sleep or you exit or disable the utility. This also activates the keep screen on setting, which gives you the option to also keep your screen on too. If you choose to keep awake for a time interval, you can choose how long you want the utility to stay in this mode before reverting back to the previous state. Once the timer is up, it'll revert back to the default setting. The last setting, keep away until expiration, allows you to choose the date and time to end awake mode. And this is like the previous setting. After this expires, it will revert back to your previous setting. This is handy if you have a specific date and time you want to end awake mode. Next up is Color Picker, and this is one of my favorite utilities in Power Toys. It lets you choose a color from any currently running application, and you can copy it into a configurable format to your clipboard. Unlike Color Pickers for browsers, this works system-wide and is great for creatives and developers. To activate the Color Picker, press Windows plus Shift plus C. This will activate the Color Picker window where you can drag your cursor to any item on the screen. You will see a color preview and the color value in a specific format that we can change. To sample the color, you just click and it's on your clipboard ready for you to paste. We have lots of nice options that we can change in the settings for this utility. For example, we can choose what happens when we activate the Color Picker. We can choose to open the editor, pick a color and open the editor, or only pick a color. I set mine to pick a color and open the editor because this gives me a pop-up after choosing my color where I can choose one of the supported color formats to choose from. I can copy the value to my clipboard to use it. It also has a history feature on the left where I can choose previously sampled colors, which is nice if you use this tool often. If you want to fine tune the color you pick, the editor will also show two shades darker and two shades lighter in the editor window at the top. If you want to go back to a previously selected color, it will be there in your history. Also, you can choose to customize the color even more by clicking on the color at the top middle and making adjustments using the slider. You can also choose the default color formats to choose from and even add your own if you don't see one of the three that come out of the box. Now, I typically use hex and RGB in my day-to-day, -day, but it's nice to know that you have options to add more. Another thing that I usually turn on is showing the color name. This is handy if you aren't great at color recognition and just need a simple way to describe the color to someone else. Just toggle it on, activate the color picker, and you will see the name of the color that it matches. The Windows Manager in Windows is okay, and it's improved in later versions of Windows, but Fancy Zones takes it to the next level. Fancy Zone is a Windows Manager utility for arranging and snapping windows into custom layouts to help you work the way you want to with your windows. And it allows you to quickly restore them too. This is one of the most feature-rich utilities in the stack, so I'll try to break it down to the most important parts to get you going fast. If you're going to use Fancy Zones, I would recommend letting Fancy Zones override the default Windows Snap that's built in. You can do this in the settings and toggling on the override settings. 
Next, let's choose a default for our zones. You can activate this by pressing Windows plus Shift plus Backtick. It's the Backtick. <laughs> upper left-hand corner on your keyboard. Here you can choose one of the existing templates or create your own. Let's choose one of the existing ones for now. After choosing a template, you can now drag a window while holding shift and you will see your zones appear. As you move the window around, you will see zones you can snap this window to. If you want to snap to zone three, just drop it in zone three and it will fill this area. You can repeat this for any window you have open. Now, if you want to do this without using the mouse, you can do this by pressing the windows key plus left or right arrow. For example, if you want to move a window into one of the zones, while the window is in focus, press Windows plus right multiple times to cycle through the zones. Once you find the zone you want, just let go of the Windows key and you're done. Once you start snapping windows into the same zone, you might find that you want to switch between windows that are snapped to the same zone. You can easily do this by selecting a window in that zone and then pressing Windows key plus page up or page down. This will cycle through all the windows snapped to this zone. If you want to customize a zone template, you can do so by pressing the Windows key plus Shift plus Backtick and then editing your template and adjusting some of the options. You can increase the number of zones, increase the space around the zones, and even the distance to highlight adjacent zones, which is helpful when trying to merge two zones together when dragging a window around. If you're not happy with existing zone templates, you can create your own by using the Zone Editor. If you activate the Zone Picker with the Windows key plus Shift plus Backtick, you will see this button at the bottom that says Create New Layout. If you click it, you can create your own custom zones in either a grid layout that snaps windows into place without overlapping, or a canvas layout which is kind of freeform and will allow you to overlap windows. Now there are many more options for customizations in the settings like change colors, multi-monitor support, and many other advanced features to help you customize windows just the way you want. File Locksmith is a nice little utility to help you know which files are in use and by which process. This is really helpful if you're trying to figure out which application is locking a file. For example, if you right click on this folder and select what's using this file, it will check to see if any of the files in this folder are being used. We can see here that we have a document open with Word, Excel, and VS Code, and even Explorer. I can expand the details of each and see what the specific files are. I can even end the task from here, killing the process and removing the lock. Just be careful when you end a task because it will kill all instances of it. This file explorer add-on utility adds some additional functionality to Windows Explorer. The first setting allows you to preview additional file types in the preview pane on the right. To toggle on the preview pane, you can press Alt plus P. With this setting toggled on, you can now see previews for SVGs, markdown, source code files, PDFs, and G code files. The other setting within the file explorer add-on utility allows you to see more thumbnails for more file types inside of Explorer when browsing your file system. This can be handy if you work on these types of files, letting you easily preview the file before opening it. The host file editor utility allows you to quickly make changes to your host file. Your host file is the first place that Windows looks in order to resolve IP addresses, and although not common unless you're in IT, you might have some non-standard items in this list. The host file editor makes it easy to edit your host file without making mistakes. To get the most out of this utility, you'll want to make sure that most settings are at the default, and that's launch as administrator, show a warning at startup, top being the position of additional content, and the encoding being UTF-8. You can quickly launch the host file editor and quickly add additional host entries without having to edit them manually. You can add comments, toggle them on and off, reorder entries by moving them up and down, run a test ping, and even see the original host file by clicking on this button. Another great feature of Power Toys is the Image Resizer. The Image Resizer lets you bulk resize images just by right-clicking and then choosing Resize Pictures. This will pop up some options where you can choose the output for the resize. There are some presets that you can adjust in the settings, but the default options I think are best. After choosing your size and clicking Resize, Windows will batch convert all of the files for you. By default, it will make copies so it's safe to run, but this can be changed easily in the settings when resizing your files. There are also more settings that you could choose from in the image resizer settings. Still waiting on that WebP option. <laughs> Would be nice. The keyboard manager is a nice little utility that allows you to remap your keys on your keyboard. This is handy if you have an odd keyboard or just want to customize some of your unused keys. For example, if we want to remap a key that is rarely used, at least for me, like caps lock, 
We can easily do that by opening the utility and then either selecting or pressing our physical key of caps lock and then selecting or typing the key you want to map it to. I chose to enter. When saving, you'll see a warning about caps lock no longer being Mac, but that's okay because I never use it. You're free to remap this if you like. After saving this, you can see that my caps lock key is now working just like my enter key. Well, it looks like now I can't yell at anyone on the internet anymore, so let's undo that. Just kidding, just kidding. You can also remap shortcuts if you like. If we wanted to remap the Control plus C shortcut to Control plus V in Chrome only, we can do that like this. This will now override the copy function with the paste function only when in Chrome. Confusing, I know, but it works great. Mouse Utilities is another one of my favorite power toys in the suite. It's a collection of features that enhance the mouse and cursor functions on Windows. It has four different features, the first being Find My Mouse. Find My Mouse highlights the position of the cursor when you press the left control key twice. This is helpful when you can't find the mouse or even when giving demos to emphasize an area for demonstration. I use this quite a bit to help viewers focus on what I'm focusing on. You can change many aspects of the spotlight and animation, making it just the way you like. You can even change the activation method, so if you don't like pressing left control twice, you can just shake the mouse until it activates. The next is Mouse Highlighter. This will highlight the left and right clicks of your mouse. You can activate it by pressing the Windows key plus Shift plus H. Once activated, left clicks will be the default color of yellow and right clicks will be the default color of blue. If you want a different color or experience, all of this can be adjusted in the settings. The next is Mouse Jump. You can activate this with the Windows key plus Shift plus D and then it will show a screenshot of your desktop. If you click on the area in the image, it will jump your cursor to this location that was clicked. This is great for large monitors where you need to travel great distances. Maybe one day I will have a monitor with a resolution this high to where I need something like this. Still cool, still cool. The last one in mouse utilities is mouse pointer crosshairs. If you activate this with Windows key plus Alt plus P, it will draw a crosshair centered on your mouse pointer. You can adjust any of the settings for the crosshairs in the appearance and behavior section. This is by far one of the coolest features of Power Toys and probably the most complicated. Mouse Without Borders allows you to control up to four computers from the same machine with only one keyboard and mouse. Think of it like extending your desktop across multiple machines, but you can remote control all of the machines from one machine. This will make more sense here in a bit. You'll need at least one additional machine with Power Toys installed. Once you have Power Toys installed on all machines, be sure that Enable Mouse Without Borders is turned on. On the first computer, select New Key to generate a new security key so you can securely connect. Then, on the second machine, enter the security key that was generated on the first machine and enter the first machine's name. Then select Connect. You will then see both machines appear in the device layout. You can rearrange them here to match their physical layout. Now you can switch between each computer by just moving your cursor to the edges of the screen and it will transition between computers. You can also add additional computers by repeating this process. Another cool thing that I learned is that you can also go the other way around too and control your primary machine from the secondary machine. Just start moving the mouse over the shared edge and it will jump back to your main machine. Now there are lots of settings and features that you can play with, but I'm just gonna highlight just a few. First is sharing the clipboard exactly what it sounds like. This allows you to copy text from one machine and paste it into another. Copying files between machines, yes. Files less than 100 megabytes can be transferred too. This is as simple as copying the file and then pasting it. You will see the file transferred using the clipboard. That's pretty cool. If you ever want to disconnect from the remote machines, you can simply generate a new key and the others will drop. Now there are additional settings, keyboard shortcuts, and even a troubleshooting section that I encourage you to explore once you get this set up. Paste as plain text is exactly what it sounds like and I'm here for it. It will paste text as plain text without additional formatting. This is super helpful when you're copying something from the web and pasting it into a document. To prevent this from happening, all you need to do is enable paste as plain text in the Power Toys, and then when you paste, just press the Windows key plus Control Alt V and it will paste text without the formatting. I don't know how I lived without that one doing all of this documentation. Peek is a nice little utility that lets you preview a file without opening it up and without scaling up Explorer. To use Peek, be sure it's turned on and select a file in Explorer and then press Control plus space. 
This will bring up a preview window where you can check out the file and even arrow through files if you have multiple. Then to close the preview, just press the same keys, control plus space, and it will close the preview. Power Rename is another one of my top used power toys. It's a bulk renaming tool that has a ton of flexibility for managing files in bulk. To use it, be sure it's enabled and then select a group of files you want to rename and then right click. From there, you'll see the Power Rename option. After clicking on that option, you'll see a new interface that will help you rename files along with a preview. You can search within a file name for specific text and even use regex if you like. You can then add text to replace the found text. You can apply it to extensions, files, folders, and subfolders. You can also shift to lowercase, to uppercase, title case, or capitalize each word. You can even enumerate each item, basically giving you a numeric suffix. One other cool thing that you can do is use variables in the file name. You can see a list of variables by clicking on the info button. From here, you can click on the variables and it will add them to the text to replace. Once you're satisfied with the text, you can apply it and it will batch rename all of your files. Power Toys Run is one of those features that once you start using it, it's hard to go back to the old way of doing things. It saves me so much time and you look cool doing it too. Power Toys Run is a quick launch utility that when pressed will allow you to launch applications, do calculations, even search the web just by typing. And it's way faster than the start menu. To launch Power Toys Run, press Alt plus space. From here, you can do simple things like launch applications. If you want to launch Chrome, just type Chrome and hit enter. Easy enough. You can also search for files, settings, and even the web. You can also do some advanced searches using plugins. For example, if you want to do calculations, you just type in the expression and it will compute it. And if you want to copy that value to your clipboard, you just hit enter. If you want to base64 encode something, you can just type how hashtag number sign. I'm going to go with number sign. You can just type number sign base64 a b c d e f and see the value and if you hit enter, it will copy it to your clipboard. And if you want a good or a good or good or good depending on how you want to say it, you just hit the number sign and type GUID and it will generate one for you. There are lots of plugins you can explore in the settings or toggle off if you don't plan on using them. It's definitely worth checking out all of the available settings if you plan on using this feature. Super powerful, super cool. Quick Accent is a quick way to type accented characters. This is especially useful when you're using a keyboard that doesn't support a specific accent. For example, on a US English keyboard, there isn't a key to type in Enye. This makes it hard to type jalapenos. <laughs> but don't worry, with the Quick Accent Power Toy, it's super easy to do. After enabling Quick Access, you can activate it by pressing the key you want to accent along with space. Here we'll hold N while pressing space. You can then keep pressing the space bar to cycle through the different characters. Once you find the one you want, just let go of N and it will insert it. If you want to insert it, uh, I think that's right. German, O, uh. <laughs> You can hold O and tap the space until you find it, then let go of O. There are so many settings you can change, especially the activation key if you want to switch from using the spacebar. Registry Preview is a quick little utility to visually preview registry changes. If you've ever opened a registry file with a text editor, you know the struggle of trying to validate these types of files, especially when editing. Registry Preview makes that a little bit easier. After opening Registry Preview, you'll then want to select a registry file to open. On the right, you can see a preview of where the key lives in your registry along with any of the values. Once edited, you can save the file and then reload the file and you can see the changes in the preview window. If you're satisfied with these changes, you can write them to the registry. You can also use the open key button to open the registry editor directly to your key. A word of caution, only edit the registry if you know what you're doing. Screen Ruler is a power toy that's not only helpful if you're a designer or developer, but also super fun to use. Screen Ruler helps you measure the pixels on your screen based on image edge detection. You can activate it with the Windows key plus Shift plus M. And from there, you can choose your measurement style. Bounds will create a bounding box where you can click and drag your mouse to measure the pixels in the box you draw. You can also hold Shift to have your boxes persist until you cancel your selection. Spacing will measure both vertical and horizontal pixels at the same time as you move your cursor around the screen. Horizontal and vertical measure will do the same, but only measuring one at a time. You can cancel any of these at any time by clicking the X or just hitting escape. There are a handful of options you can configure in settings. The shortcut guide is a nice little utility that shows common Windows shortcuts in an overlay. 
You can activate this by pressing the Windows key plus shift plus forward slash or Windows key plus shift plus question mark if you're looking for the forward slash. From here, you can see all of the items you can launch by pressing the Windows key plus the key you see on the screen. For example, it says the emoji panel can be opened with semicolon, so all we need to do is hold down the Windows key and press semicolon. Feel free to explore the other shortcuts here on the screen. Text Extractor is a great utility to extract text from any image and copy it to your clipboard. It uses OCR to do this and it actually works really good. This is great when you want to quickly grab text from an image or a screenshot. To activate it, all you need to do is press the Windows key plus Shift plus T, and then with your crosshairs, select the area you want to extract text from. After selecting it, it will be copied to your clipboard where you can paste it. The text extractor can only extract languages that have the OCR language pack installed. So if you need to install additional languages, I'll have a link in my documentation on how to do that. Now this next power toy is in legacy mode, meaning they won't release any updates to it, but it's worth mentioning because it's still available. I wouldn't be surprised to see this go away since Windows is starting to support this natively without a power toy. Anyway, first you'll need to be sure that you run power toys as administrator. You'll need to close it first and then right click run as administrator. After you do this and visit the video conference mute section, you will see shortcuts for muting the camera and the microphone. To mute both your camera and microphone, you can press the Windows key plus Shift plus Q, and you will see a little bar up here that shows both are muted. You can press this combination again to toggle them both on and off. To toggle just the microphone, you press the Windows key plus Shift plus A, and to toggle just the camera, it's Windows key plus Shift plus O. If you wanna mute your microphone and toggle it only when you wanna speak, you can use the push to talk feature by pressing Windows key plus shift plus I. This will unmute your microphone when you're holding this combination of keys. Again, this is a legacy feature that I personally don't use, but I wanted to cover it for completeness. There are so many useful utilities in this suite and more being added with each new release. Well, I learned a ton of new shortcuts, lots of new ways of working on Windows, and I hope you learned something too. And remember, if you found anything in this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.